Going to be real with y'all, the Jets might be cooked. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey Jets fans and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. On tonight's episode, obviously, Winnipeg just lost in overtime to the Edmonton Oilers, but let's be real, right? Despite the Jets having a big third-period comeback, if we're being honest, the Jets did deserve to lose this game after a great start. Winnipeg started to peter out. They started playing a lot less aggressively. And guess what? The Oilers made them uh, pay quite quite badly, I'm not going to lie. Um the Jets got paddled for a good stretch of the game, and it was only thanks to Connor Hellebuck that the Jets even had a chance of coming back in this. And even then, at the end of the game, it wasn't enough. More brain dead mistakes cost them. And, you know, that precious extra point that probably could have given the Jets a bit of a boost in the standings falls away once again. So, four straight losses. You can say, well, the Jets still got a point out of it, out of a game that, you know, they frankly should have gotten zero points. And you're right, that's true. But you, you know what? Honestly, I, th- I think we're just seeing the Jets, uh, you know, everyone hates the F word, you know, the fraud word. But I think Winnipeg um, is unfortunately starting to look a lot more like what they've been accused of being. And we'll get to that in just a moment and how much is really true and how much is uh, perhaps a little bit of an overstatement. But just wanted to let you know that tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and be sure to use promo code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Now, this game against the Oilers, uh, wow. Um, So there's a couple of key takeaways, and I think the first thing is that the Jets just looked really slow, right? Um, After a really fast start, you know, as the Oilers started to uh, apply pressure and speed up the pace of the game, Winnipeg just looked like they could not keep up. Um, And that's kind of been the the theme of this team against faster, scrappier, and and skilled teams that have skating uh, prowess, right? It's one of the reasons why I think you know, as much as I enjoy Sean Monaghan, he's not a guy that I would say really fits into Winnipeg's long-term plan. He's been nice on the power play and stuff, but his, you know, foot speed and whatnot really doesn't favor him against teams like Edmonton or Colorado, maybe even Dallas. These teams all kind of skate laps around the Jets, and it's those sorts of counters and stuff where the Jets have really been vulnerable. Now, in this game, you saw less of, like, um, some of the breakaways and stuff that we've seen in other games. There were some really big ones, including an Evander Kane one that the Jets managed to save. But I think where Winnipeg really got killed was in the cycle game and sort of along the perimeter where the Oilers were able to pass around pretty quickly and get the Jets on some cross slot movement. Uh, now, Hellebuck, again, probably robbed more than his share of chances. I thought he was outstanding in this game, probably uh, one of the best he's had in the past couple of games that he's played. But it just wasn't enough. And look, I know that the Jets were able to force overtime, but if you look at the the actual uh, performance of Winnipeg in this game and kind of look at how they created their chances and what they missed on, what they didn't convert on, and you know the poor power plays and getting outplayed continually at 5v5, it's just hard to really take positive takeaways from this game because at the end of the day, they still lost. And I think the the central issue with this team, uh, especially in the lack of foot speed and the issues moving the puck, they continue to persist. They're not going away. They don't seem to be getting better. And with Bones really being uh, insistent on his line combos and stuff, you're seeing probably a lot of what Dallas Stars fans used to be really frustrated with. And I know that we'll all say, well, you know, the Stars ended up making the Stanley Cup finals, but they still lost, right? They got to the dance and they lost. Uh, And when you look at the way that they actually got there, it's not like they were all that convincing. So for Winnipeg, you know, this is one of those situations where it's, it's probably too late to really expect major changes. But I think if we're talking about, you know, looking ahead to the future, um, 
I'll be honest. I don't think this team has a particularly bright prog, you know, prognosis for the postseason. And I know that I've wavered back and forth at various points in the season, but I think we're seeing, you know, unfortunately, uh, what the Jets really are at this point. And even with Velarde back, I just have a hard time seeing Winnipeg really turning it around because it kind of comes down to the coaching staff, right? The coaching staff still continues to trust the wrong players and punish guys who, look, they'll make mistakes and have some bad games, but you're sending the wrong message because the guys that do need to be held accountable never seem to get the same treatment. So it's frustrating. It continues to uh, put a lot of focus on the idea of accountability within the Jets organization. And I hate that we're still talking about this, you know, a couple of years on from Maurice, because this is the same conversation that we had when Paul was around and it's not really changed, which, you know, for all of the good change and culture change that the Jets have managed to bring along, there are still signs of the old decay and rot that sit underneath that they've not quite been able to vanquish. So, you know, at this point, I just feel like I, I'm not going to let myself get angry or annoyed or frustrated anymore. I mean, at this point, I've just sort of accepted the season to be, you know, it is what it is, as they say. But it just feels like these games, uh, I don't know, Winnipeg sort of let it get away from them. They, they played not to lose. And then when overtime rolled around, after they'd done all of that hard work to force uh, an overtime period and scrap out a, a chance for another point. They had some really awful um, 3v3 tactics and deployments that were just, yeah, uh, surprised the Jets didn't get punished sooner for their mistakes. And you factor that in with the no numerous power plays the Jets had uh, that they could have taken advantage of and instead had some of the worst, you know, four minute power plays I've ever seen. Um, just uh, overall, just a lot of frustration. I think that's the net result. Uh, I know I just said I, I'm not going to let myself get annoyed or frustrated, but still hard not to as a Jets fan. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I've just sort of tried to compartmentalize it and say, well, you know, I, I guess we're just looking forward to next season because I think in this current state, this team just doesn't have it. It just doesn't seem like anything of the the quality of of play or or the fun stuff that we saw earlier this season has carried at all to the second half. Winnipeg looks dead in the water, and unless something drastically changes between now and the last um, couple of games of the season, we're, we've only got 10 games left, uh, I have a really hard time seeing Winnipeg really climbing out of this hole that they've kind of dug for themselves. They seem to be lost looking for answers, and I think in a game like this, you know, I have to hear some of the post uh, post game comments, but the general feeling I have is that the Jets have sort of uh, entered a state of being like Sisyphus, pushing the boulder up the hill, and things aren't really getting better. And the coaching staff isn't really offering the sort of guidance that it needs to. At some point, they are going to have to really shuffle these lines and come up with some combos that actually make sense. You can't just keep going back to the same junk that has gotten your team in trouble time and time again. And look, I love Bones for what he has done for the team overall, but in the tactical side of things, his feel for the game is definitely where he has really uh, found himself lacking, and I think that's a tough one. You know, this team really needs somebody who can make the most of the squad, and you look at what's happening with Nashville and how Brunette's really turned that squad around. It's frustrating, right? It just feels like the Jets could be so much more than what they're showing us right now, although, you know, with some of the clear uh, liabilities in the roster – Maybe not as much as I, I would like to let myself believe. But, you know, at this point, there is a path for the Jets through the playoffs, perhaps even a, a round or two. And I'll talk about what that path might be because it's not going to be a popular one. And I don't think it's going to be encouraging the right kind of uh, path forward. But we'll get to that in just a moment and talk about maybe the Jets needing to lose more than they uh, than they win. But before we get into that and, and talk about, you know, some – less savory ways to make the playoffs and really have a deep run. Just wanted to shout out our friends and partners at Sleeper. We're almost to the end of the season and the Jets have had all sorts of highs and lows. We're probably in one of the lower spots right now where the Jets have lost four straight and things feel a little bit bleak. But regardless of where the Jets are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you could win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Obviously, for all of you stats nerds who love following the top stars, whether it's McKinnon, McDavid, McCarr, uh, you know, Shifley, Ehlers, Hellebuck, Vasilevsky, uh, Ottinger, Robertson, doesn't matter, right? You know their stats, plus or minus, saves, uh, you know, assists, goals, all that fun stuff. If you can beat 
sleepers, projections, whether it's more or less for a given game for that player, you could win big. Because if you get eight of those predictions for one game correct, guess what? You could win 100 times your bet with sleeper. That's right, 100 times your bet with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Be sure to use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That is code LOCKEDONNHL. Sleep Sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are talking about, um, you know, frustrations and, and and you know, poor performances from this team. Nothing new, if we're being honest. And I, I, I will say that we've seen this team be worse in the past. So I guess technically this year is, uh, you know, a definite improvement over other seasons. But man, it, it doesn't feel good right now when you're mired in a losing streak and things just seem to be falling away from the Jets, not too dissimilarly to how they did last year. I was really hoping that the whole January collapse was something that we had moved past. But you know what? It seems like it's rearing its head again. And it seems like the Jets, once again, are, are sort of on the back foot. But uh, before we kind of commiserate and, and get frustrated and annoyed over Winnipeg's recent form, just wanted to let you know something really cool that you know a lot of you might be interested in, or maybe you've even heard me talk about it. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn them the volume because they're all shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the shouting and screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All you have to do is just subscribe and be sure to follow uh, Locked On uh, Sports Today, you know, uh, laugh, all from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, like I said, uh, for the Jets, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a grim situation for Winnipeg, right? You know, they're in a playoff spot, and sure, they're currently in a top three seed in the Central, but you look at the standings, you look at who's behind them, and you look at how fast the Preds are catching up to Winnipeg, and at this point, you can pretty much kiss the division crown hopes away. That's, that's not happening, uh, not with Winnipeg's current form, probably not even with a turnaround, in part because everyone else just keeps doing well while the Jets continue to sag, and they've burned all of their games in hand. They've really not won much recently. And since they got called frauds, I think they're what, like seven, six, and one. So really hard to argue against the idea that they are frauds um, as much as I'd love to. And um, yeah, you know, all these other teams continue to rack up points, including the Preds. And it, it starts to get to a point where, you know, maybe moving out of the top three of the Central is actually good, right? You move into a wild card spot, maybe you have a hope of facing a squad. Uh, say like Vancouver, which is not really a particularly positive thing. I know Vancouver has scuffled a little bit recently, but I'll tell you what, I think I would probably trust the Oiler or the the, the Canucks uh, offensive talent over what the Jets have recently put together, uh, especially in a seven game series. You know, the Jets did beat Edmund or Vancouver once this season. I keep saying the Oilers because of this stupid pass game. Uh, that's how annoyed I am uh, over this loss. But, you know, the Jets did beat Vancouver once. And then they got obliterated by Vancouver in the second meeting. And they have another one on this docket. But, like, I just – I guess if I'm trying to choose teams that I think Winnipeg could maybe hang with, uh, I would probably prefer to play the Canucks out of those top seeds. And, again, it's really like picking your own poison at this point. And I think for Winnipeg, it's it's tough because, you know, the Jets have shown at times that they can beat really good teams, but they haven't done it very often recently. And with the downturn in form and the Jets starting to look a lot more mortal and the coaching staff seemingly running out of ideas as to how to fix it, you know, at this point, maybe getting out of the central division completely is Winnipeg's only hope of advancing, which is sad to say. Uh, it really shouldn't be this way. And I know that like earlier this year, the Jets record against the central looked good, but I think it's because they played a lot of teams that were not that great when they actually did play them. Minnesota, the Blues, um, the Preds earlier this year, Chicago, Arizona, some really inflated records off of that stuff. And then you start facing the actual class of the division and Winnipeg generally struggled against a lot of them, especially the stars. And then, you know, most recently we had the loss against the Preds. Nashville has like gone like what, like 15, Oh, and two or 16, Oh, and two or something recently. Uh, just a crazy, crazy record. And, you know, suddenly they look like a team that's going to upset somebody in the postseason. So, yeah, you know, I'm trying to find positives, trying to to be optimistic about Winnipeg, but I think at this point I've I've sort of 
been getting closer to throwing the towel on that. I think um, any sort of advancement for the Jets is going to be a little bit more fortunate or, or, you know, on the shoulders of Hellebuck. And maybe that's enough, right? Maybe the Jets can really advance through very far on the back of Hellebuck and some fortunate, you know, goals here and there um, for a round or two. But I, I think beyond that, man, I'm having a really hard time projecting this team's performance out of the first and second rounds. You know, how Winnipeg has played recently, how they've looked, how the line combos have worked, and the knowledge that even with Velarde back, he probably goes right back with Connor and Shifley. That that already tanks his value, right? So what is, you know, what is his value that you're actually getting out of him? And it's really just on the power play, which, look, that's great, but like a lot of the power plays in the postseason – are uh, tough to earn. You know, the Jets are going to have fewer odd man situations uh, on the man advantage. You, you know, the, the the playoff refing tends to be a little bit more lenient. So, yeah, I, I just, I look at the situation and I feel like there aren't many avenues for the Jets to really do well. So at this point, if you death spiral into a wild card spot, that might actually be more preferable than having to face one of Nashville, Dallas, or Colorado, you know, in an assured uh, seed at the top, which really is, is 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 sounding stupid to say but i think that's where the jets are you know unless they they want to tangle with some of these top squads and prove that they can somehow hang with them which i think they've shown they can't uh then you know it's going to be a tough one and i i really hate to be down about the jets right now because you look at the overall season and it's been a smashing success they're close to 50 wins you think with everything that they've gone through and and had this year you would imagine that the prognosis and, and the outlook would be really positive. But instead, here we are, you know, 10 games left in the season, and we're talking about the Jets getting bounced in the first round yet again. That's kind of how, you know, Winnipeg has looked, and maybe it was really what this team was all along, and perhaps that stretch earlier this year really masked it. But even then, there's just stuff that this team is seemingly getting caught on that they weren't getting caught on earlier. Uh, you know, the mistakes have really piled up. Hellebuck has had more mortal games recently uh, than his usual Vesna caliber self. And, you know, the Jets offense sputters, the special teams have been terrible. It just feels like Winnipeg is kind of coming apart at the seams and all of the mistakes and, and errors and poor choices that they make have, you know, really compile combined into this big pile of uh, underperformance. So really disappointing, um, very tough. And now I guess we just have to hope that the Jets, uh, can kind of claw back some semblance of form and, and stability before they face, you know, a really daunting playoff run. I feel like with the West being so deep this year, uh, especially in the Central Division, the Jets really have very few avenues of getting through the postseason without at least one or two of these top, top teams getting bounced in the first round. And good freaking luck with that. I know it's chaos and I know it's random and hockey in the postseason is cruel, but uh, yeah, I am having a hard time getting too excited about the outlook right now. So in just a little bit, I think it might be worth talking about who our rooting, rooting interests should be. Who do we want to see do do well? And who should we kind of root for to do poorly as, you know, the Jets start to jockey for uh, some form of a playoff seeding and hopefully clinch their playoff berth here pretty soon. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are just uh, taking a look at, uh, you know, some some rough standing stuff. And I think Winnipeg is in a, a tight spot right now. I think, um, you know, Winnipeg has, has put itself in a bad position playoff seating wise. I think that they are, you know, starting to fall out of the race for, you know, forget the president's trophy, right? At, at this point, let's just stop talking about that. But even the central division title, it's probably out of Winnipeg's reach. I think, you know, for what Winnipeg needs and for what they want, uh, it actually might be better to to slide into a wild card spot. And I think for the Jets to have that happen, you know, Winnipeg really needs to push for, uh, you know, kind of rooting for the Preds to, to beat them out for the third seed in the central. Because if you do that, Winnipeg has a pretty good record this year and a pretty good standings position to sit in the first wild card where you'd face Vancouver. Um, and I think once you are kind of looking at that picture, right, if the Jets move into wild card one, they face Vancouver uh, or, or one of the other teams, I think Vancouver's running away with the Pacific. So that's probably a pretty good lock for who you'd face. Um, but then if you look at say the central, right, who do you want to emerge out of that? And I think of the teams that Winnipeg could comfortably uh, play some sort of competitive hockey against. 
I guess the Preds. <laughs> I don't know if that's really uh, saying a lot, but if the Preds were to survive Dallas or something, maybe that's a team you could get through. I feel like the Stars would probably prevail in a seven-game series. Uh, the Avs, you know, Colorado is one of those teams that scares me in the same way that the Oilers do. I feel like they have a lethal power play, and they're really fast and skilled down low with a lot of good puck movement that would put the Jets in a tight spot. But, uh, yeah, you know, for, for what Winnipeg needs, and I think for what um, we should be hoping for, you probably want one of Dallas or Colorado knocked out early. Uh, you'd you'd want to face the Canucks. And I can't even uh, say that I'm excited about those prospects because then you're probably going to face a pretty decent team after that. And that, that's if the Jets even make it out of the first round. I got to be honest, I'm not super con convinced of that. And with all of these teams continuing to rack up wins while the Jets have struggled, Winnipeg really doesn't seem to control its own destiny anymore. I guess the only hope or, I, you know, the only positive spit is that generally speaking, like I said, they've still got a strong record to build off of. And with 10 games left, anything can happen. And there's still a chance for them to maybe turn things around and at least, um, put themselves in a decent, decent playoff seating. But I got to be honest, man, unless they start looking really competitive against some of these top clubs, I have a really hard time getting excited about, you know, the, the prospect of facing anyone from the central, any of the top teams from, you know, the Pacific, it just feels like Winnipeg has kind of been exposed. And again, like I said earlier in this episode, that F word fraud, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a word we don't want to use. We don't like it. And we wish that we could sort of turn away from it, but I'm starting to feel like maybe that was right, you know. Uh, and it's not like I didn't have some of these suspicions before. I mean, we, we sort of knew where Winnipeg was weak, right? And those weaknesses at some point were bound to get exposed. I think in the long run, you know, the, the more that you struggle with some of the same stuff, the more likely it is that come the end of the season, it's going to get, you know, you know, blown open and, and perhaps shown to more audiences than you'd care. And I think, you know, the Oilers, the Preds, the Canucks, the Stars, they've all kind of highlighted the sort of team Winnipeg is. And, you know, somehow the Isles did too. Uh, the Devils, I'll give them credit. The 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 uh, Devils are actually a pretty strong team. They just didn't have goaltending at the start of the year. So um, I would probably put them in like that Nashville category. But then, you know, the loss to, to Washington, even where the Jets played well, still didn't matter in the end. So, uh I'm starting to run out of answers, right? I think that, you know, that's the general vibe with this team. You're trying to find ways to scrap through the postseason, and that should never be the situation. You should be thinking about ways that you can advance in controlled, dominant fashion. And the Jets, they aren't showing that they're capable of that. Not yet. So uh, <laughs> 10 games left to turn things around, 10 games left to try and find some sort of a line chemistry or combo that gets this team back rolling. But I think with Bones at the helm, it's probably not happening unless he radically changes his whole approach and starts to change the way that he sees this roster. It's not happening. Um, and with the team, you know, in a pretty tough spot at this point, you know, maybe it's time we start talking about next season. I, I feel like it's way too early to do that. And I feel like, you know, I'm sort of going back against my optimism from earlier this year, but the more I see of this team uh, since the, the turn of the calendar year, the more I just feel like, you know, at this point, it's it's better to the it's better to consider next season because this year feels like it's going much the same way like it did last year, where you know the Jets faced the Knights, they got bounced, and you know there was a huge rift between the coaching staff and the Jets locker room. And I really hope that that doesn't happen again. That was really ugly and embarrassing, especially after all of the drama that we'd just gone through during the Maurice era. But it kind of feels like it's going back to that direction again. And uh, maybe this is kind of the season where, you know, Bones sort of finishes it out and both him and the team kind of agree to go their separate ways. I think that'll happen if the Jets really struggle in the postseason. It might happen anyways, even if they do well and have maybe a round or two. Um, you know, I think both of these uh, groups need to have differing priorities. And I think that's where, you know, that split might happen. But Give me your thoughts on what you think should happen with the coaching staff. Are you happy with the direction of the team? Do you think they still have enough to turn it around? Are you excited about the playoffs? Am I being too down? Drop your thoughts and comments below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thanks so much for making Locked on Jets your first listen of the day every day. We'll see you back here tomorrow with some preview coverage uh, for Winnipeg versus uh, some tough opponents upcoming over the next few days. but. 
man. At some point, I just hope to recap a win. That's all I'm asking for, Jets. Give us something to latch on to because it's feeling not so great right now. But like I said, that's all the time that we have for tonight. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. And as always, go Jets go.